So we, as the Ministry of Culture, we're seeing uh, the preparation of, of this program, are extremely impressed by the uh, care and the uh, thoughtfulness and the sensitivity of, uh, well, uh, with which uh, the CONAS team are taking uh, on this, not an easy, but uh, a very important task. So I would like to invite uh, Ritis uh, Zemkauskas, the representative of uh, CONAS, uh, the European Capital of Culture 2022, to tell a little bit more about their work they're doing. And uh, thank you once more for the opportunity to give you a first glimpse into the program that will be implemented in this uh, wonderful, unique city, CONAS. Please, floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Minister. Um, I'm much honored to be here and happy to speak to people whom I don't have to persuade that culture is important. It doesn't happen very often to me. Uh, when people learn that I'm a creator for um, the European Capital of Culture, they usually have two questions to me. The first question is, what grand events are you going to have in the year 2022? And the second, how much the whole thing is going to cost. I would like to state that we believe that it is in fact quite possible to make a successful capital of culture without any grand events whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, we are not some grumpy cult members trying to kill all the fun in the world. No, we are fun-loving people. We simply think that European capital of culture should not be about grand events. Uh, you see, when people hear capital of culture, they usually hear culture, and when they hear culture, they think art. Uh, and I think this is exactly where the problem is. Of course, art is a proud part of culture, but only a tiny part. Uh, when we think culture, uh, we think about our mindset. We think about the way we do things. And this is precisely what culture means to us. Culture is a way to do things. Therefore, if we want to change our life, uh, our community, we have to change our ways, we have to change culture. And this is exactly what the European Union was created for, to change from a culture of warfare into a culture of peace, from a culture of dictatorship into a culture of consensus. Uh, and the European capital of culture may be a perfect starting point to change things in the European Union. It could become a case study where we test, change, and adjust our mindset. Therefore, I see European capital of culture as a huge learning project. And I can see two approaches to learning, the vertical uh, based on authority and theory, and horizontal based on community and practice. What concerns me personally, I am very much a representative of the first one, the vertical one. It is rather simple. Uh, it takes less time and brings some obvious and measurable results, and it involves speaking. Well, horizontal way is far more complicated and time-consuming. It involves socializing, getting acquainted, getting involved, and sometimes getting stuck. And it may not bring measurable results or attract people, but it involves listening, and I think this is the most important thing. Well, I don't think that horizontal approach is the answer to everything. I don't want our societies to turn into hippie communities of the 70s where simple laziness and lack of responsibility were sometimes presented as communal values. No way. At the end of the day, somebody has to pay the bill and somebody has to do the dishes, and there, are must, be, there must be people in charge. But a healthy balance between vertical and horizontal approaches is needed, and this is exactly what I would like the European capital of culture to be. So a horizontal approach to learning always means lots and lots of patience and respect and readiness to change your initial beliefs and plans. And this leads me to the second question, how much is it going to cost? And I would like to answer that question like this, how much the World War II has cost? Or how much cost the war in Serbia? Because all these are attempts to impose somebody's views without listening. So the Capital of Culture project will cost around 100,000 times less than an average war. And I dare to say that it has a capacity to diminish a perspective of that war. By what percentage? I don't know. And this is another important thing about a horizontal approach. Since there are many voices and opinions, we can never be too sure about the outcome, meaning that there's uncertainty involved. So to deal with uncertainties in our communities, we must learn to trust, and trust, to my mind, is a purely cultural phenomenon. So next time somebody asks me what grand events are we going to have and how much is it going to cost, I would like to answer like this. Every day of learning will be a grand event for us. 
and it will cost exactly how much one day of peace and happiness costs. Thank you very much, and you are most welcome to Konas, Lithuania. Thank you.